torque. It comes from the Latin word torquere, and it means to twist. Now, we talk about nuts and bolts in our cars. In the world of engineering, they talk about fasteners. It's all the same thing. And when we talk about nuts and bolts and fasteners, we talk about torque and torque specifications. So what is torque? Torque is a twisting force. There's pushing force, there's pulling force, there's lifting force, and others. Torque is the force we use to twist something. Now, torque specifications for our classic British cars are usually called out in foot-pounds. These cars are located all over the world. The international standard of units, usually written SI units, measures weight in newtons instead of pounds, and it measures distance in meters instead of feet. So you might see the international torque specifications for your vehicle displayed as newton meters instead of foot-pounds. Can they be changed? Can they be interchanged? Easily. One foot-pound equals 14.6 newton meters, and one newton meter equals 0 0.07 foot-pounds. And sometimes you may see the torque specifications for what you're working on called out in inch-pounds. Inch-pounds are the same thing, only a very small version of it. This is a smaller torque range than what most of us have seen. On this side here, it's called out in inch-pounds, and on the belly of the side, it's in newton meters. And this would be working for things that are smaller and more delicate. However, most of us have worked with a torque wrench much like this one here, a larger one. We all know what they do. It's called on in foot-pounds on the back. It's called on an inch on newton meters, excuse me, on the belly. And we're going to set this to the proper specification. We put it onto whatever fastener we're working with. And then we pull or push until a dial tells us that we're in the right place, or a click sound happens, or a little light comes on. It all helps us to do the same thing. It helps us to appreciate or get to the torque that we're trying to get to. Now, when we talk about a torque specification, what does a torque specification do? Where does the number come from? And what does the number mean? To understand that, let's see a demonstration. What we have here is a yardstick. And I'm going to put the end of the yardstick in the middle of my left hand. Now, I'm going to go out to 18 inches, which is 1.5 feet. And I'm going to ask you to imagine that I've taken and put a 6-pound weight right here. And when I put the 6-pound weight right here, of course, what it does is it pushes this yardstick down, as it should. But what I want you to focus on is what's going on over here in my left hand. As this moves this way, my left hand twists. By, in other words, by putting a force here, I'm creating torque over here. How much torque? Well, imagine I hang 6 pounds right here at 1.5 feet. 1.5 feet times 6 pounds equals 9 foot-pounds. If I put 6 pounds here, I'm putting 9 foot-pounds of torque right there. It'd be the exact same thing as if I took a torque wrench, set it for 9 foot-pounds, and did this. If I take and get rid of the 6-pound weight, let's say I hang a 10-pound weight, 1.5 feet times 10 pounds is 15 foot-pounds. If I go out to 2 feet, 2 feet times 10 pounds would be 20 foot-pounds. So now we can begin to see where the numbers come from. If you're working on your engine, for example, and there's a torque specification for like 45 foot-pounds, it would be the same as if you went out 1.5 feet here and hung a 30-pound weight. 1.5 times 30 would give us 45 foot-pounds. That's what the numbers mean, and that's how they're arrived at. Now, while we're talking about torque specification, a couple of questions. Why are torque specifications so important, and what are we really trying to do when we're using them? To understand that, we need to understand a concept. And the concept is this, that while we're struggling to tighten a torque to, or a nut or a bolt or fastener to exactly the specific torque spec, and we're struggling to twist it to just the right tightness, we're doing that, and that's not what we really want. It's not what's really important. When the original engineer called for the torque specification, what he was really trying to get us to do was to stretch the fastener to a specific percentage of its total overall length. When we stretch the fastener, we create a clamping force. That's what he really wants. Let's see if we can demo that. What I have here is I have a couple of cardboard boxes with a hole, couple of holes in them, and they're free to move around. I've taken and I put a piece of wire through, and I've got a rubber band, and I've got a paper clip at one end to act as an anchor. And I'm going to pull this piece of wire through the two boxes, like this. And let's see if it should come up for us. All the way out. And I'm going to take and I'm going to take and put another anchor in right here. And then I'm going to take this wire out. Now, 
I've got an anchor at this end, and I've got an anchor at this end, and just like if I were working with a nut and a bolt, I'd have a nut at one end and the head of the bolt at the other. And when they tighten, they stretch just like the rubber band in here is stretched, and the effect is I get a clamping force. It holds the pieces together. When we understand that what we're really looking for is a clamping force, an entire door of opportunity opens up for us. We begin to understand things. We understand that we're looking for a clamping force, not a tightening. Now, before we cover what that all means for us, we need to understand one more thing, and that's the concept of friction. When this is being used, for example, when this nut is up against a piece of metal or something and it's turning, there's friction right here. Inside, where the threads of this meet the threads of that, there's more friction. At this end, where this is tightening up against something, there's friction. So the reality is that most of the force we put, most of the torque that we employ to try to get a bolt with specific, specific torque specification is in reality wasted on friction. Only a small percentage of that force is actually used to stretch this bolt. So what are we looking for when we talk about torque? What I have here is a torque chart. I downloaded this from the web, and this is going to help us to understand the four things that we're looking for. The first thing we're looking for is referred to as the bolt diameter. It's listed as quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, metrics are laid out as they would normally be. And when we talk about the diameter, we're talking about the size from one side of this to the other. We're not talking about where we put the wrench. The diameter is this part here, and that's the way they're listed. The next thing we're looking for is thread count, or what is called fine thread or coarse thread. And you'll see coarse and fine are listed here. Why is that important? Well, if I have fine threads, there's more threads per linear inch here than there would be in a coarse threaded bolt. More threads here means more threads in the nut, and what's going to happen is I'm going to have more friction because there's more surface or contact area inside here. Watch what happens. I'm going to take a quarter inch bolt, dry, and if it's coarse threaded, it calls for eight foot pounds to stretch it to what the manufacturer wants us to get to, what the engineer is looking for. Eight foot pounds. However, if it's fine thread, I have to give it 10 foot pounds. That's 25% more for the exact same size bolt, and the only difference is the fact that it's fine threaded. It's going to give us the same stretch, but we have to overcome that friction. The next thing is it says lubed or dry, and sometimes referred to in textbooks as wet or dry. If it's lubricated, what's going to happen to the friction? The friction is going to go down. It will take less stress or less torque to get this to stretch if it's lubricated. That's why this quarter inch dry takes eight foot pounds, but if it's got lubrication, it only takes six, 25% less. The amount of stretch on the bolt is going to be the same, but it takes less torque to do it simply because we've lubricated it. And the last thing is what's referred to as grade. You see grade five and grade eight. The grade refers to the hardness of this material. They can make these out of different kinds of metals. They can treat them with heat. They can treat them with chemicals or a combination of both. And the end result is, is this is harder. Well, if it's harder, it's going to resist stretching, so you have to use more torque. So let's look at a quarter inch dry, coarse threaded bolt is going to take eight foot pounds, and she's a grade five. A quarter inch dry, coarse thread um, in grade eight is going to take 12 foot pounds, 50% more. And simply because this is a grade eight bolt, it's harder to stretch. Now, there is something else to watch for. When we're working with a fastener, and we're using our torque specifications, we don't want to over torque. If we over torque, what's going to happen is we're going to overstretch this. We'll either weaken it or worse yet, we can break it. And sometimes these are really strong and they'll hold up to being overstressed, but what will happen is we will go ahead and we will crush what we're trying to put the clamping force on. So over torquing the bolt is a harmful thing to do. And lastly, regarding torque, there are times when somebody will have a shop manual and the shop manual will say, torque this bolt to a specific foot pound rating. However, you'll have a, of a chart like this one here that we found on the internet, and it will have a different reading for the same size bolt. It will say, well, I'm confused. The shop manual says one thing, this manual over here or this chart says something different, which is correct. Well, there are other factors involved. The engineers who designed your car knew what they were doing, and if they chose a different torque specification of what would normally be called for, do what the shop manual says. That will be right because they had all the rest of the factors compensated for. So in conclusion, torque is simply a measure of twisting force used to spin two fasteners together, and that's going to allow us to create the tension or the stretch in this bolt or any fastener, and that in turn is going to give us the clamping force that we use to hold things together. Thank you.